Uh, so my name's Sue and I'm going to give you a few tips here on how to go about creating your window. Um, the first thing you need to do is grab a bit of your wet strength tissue and you need to measure up a black background for your window. This will give you a bit of privacy while you're sitting at home with the lights on it in your window. So the first thing you need to do is just hold your tissue up against the window and see how you are for size. You may have to join two or more pieces together, which I'll show you how to do in a moment. But I am extremely lucky because this sheet pretty much fits exactly my window, but most of you won't be that lucky. So what you will need to do is trim it. So if I should put it this way around, I can show you. This is probably the easiest way. If your window is not too big, is just to put it in nice and neatly in the one side make sure that you've not got any gaps down there where the light could show through and then on the other side it's easier if you've got someone to uh, actually help you with this to hold it flat but on the other side you can just run a fingernail down the gap and that should just score the tissue slightly so you can see where you need to cut so that's the easiest way if you've got a helper or someone who can give you a hand you could run a pencil down there and that would make it a little bit clearer but i think that's going to be obvious enough and you can even sort of crease it along that gap to make it a bit more obvious where you need to cut now the other way you can do it obviously is to measure so i've got about 58 there but i would always measure it just very slightly bigger so that you don't get any cracks of light once you hold it up in the window and if you're having to join pieces and you may not get them perfectly straight, it's probably a good idea to add one or two centimetres extra, depending how big your window is and how many joins you've got, just to make sure that you don't get any gaps. So I would measure that off there. It's 58, so I'd probably do it 58 and a half on this smallest window, maybe a little bit more on the length because it's a bit longer. So when you come to trimming, you need a really sharp knife blade. Now, if you've got one of these push up knife blades, you've got loads of blades in there and it's easy to change them. They come with a little piece at the end that is supposed to go on there and then snap it off very easily. However, I find that they tend to be a little bit fragile and not well enough made. So I prefer to use pliers to do mine. But um, if I just show you quickly, you can see where the line of the blade is. So if you try and line your, your pliers up with the crack where the blade is going to break off, then I do this, push it back in, close my eyes in case a little bit of blade pings up and just snap it off like that. Be careful how you dispose of, of the extra bits so you don't know one can cut themselves on that. And then cutting, you need something to cut onto. I've got a cutting mat. If you don't have one, you can find yourself a bit of corrugated cardboard and open out a box or something like that. Anything to protect your surface. And we can see where the line is that I scored here. So if you have a metal ruler, that will be better just because you won't be taking chunks out of your ruler with the knife. If you've just got a plastic one, just be careful that you're not trimming bits off the ruler at the same time. And um, with the tissue, it's quite easy to catch it while you're cutting. So if you keep your blade quite pushed out, but keep it at a very f flat angle. So you're lying, rather than cutting down like this, you're lying the blade very flat. Then you just run that along your ruler and you should get a really nice, neat edge when you trim that away. Okay, so when it comes to joining two pieces of tissue, the easiest way I have found is just to run your glue stick about just less than a centimetre over the, over the edge of your tissue. Just make sure everything's got a reasonable coat there. And then I'm going to pull the other tissue 
and just overlap it by about well just less than a centimeter I think is enough so I'm just going to hold that in place and then from the middle I'm going to draw it out both ways just rub that gently and that's those comfortably joined just ease it gently off the table so that's the tissue paper joined when you come to join the black paper it's a bit heavier and I'm not sure that the um, the glue stick on its own is enough and I have tried just butting them together and sellotaping but you get a gap between so I'm going to do sellotape and glue stick on the black paper so I'm going to run my glue stick along the edge first of all I don't know if you can see that from the angle I've got the camera but I'm just going to overlap again just about a centimetre probably just if you line it up at the sides it should be good in the middle it's got a bit of rigidity to it more so than the tissue so then you can rub that down well and it might be sufficient on its own but just for just for comfort I like to run a piece of sellotape along also and you can trim that off at the ends afterwards but the advantage of doing that is that when you lift it you don't get a flap here because it's been glued it's all nice and solid and then you can cut out from that perfectly so when it comes to cutting out you need to draw your image on now you can either use an HB pencil or just an ordinary pencil for that or you can use a bit of chalk which I also find very useful if you're working in low light then the chalk's a lot easier to use but it does leave a bit of a mark you can kind of rub it off or you can use an eraser to get rid of that so or you can just not worry about it too much but I don't know if you can see I've got a stocking here that I'm cutting out and I've drawn stripes for sort of ribbing at the ends and I've put X's on the pieces that I want to cut away so I'm going to show you quickly I'm sure you all know how to do this but I'm going to keep my hand behind the blade at all times and I'm going to run quickly down this bit putting in the cuts for the bottom ends of my ribbing I'm going to do the same at the top so I know which ones they are because I've put my X's on there and then always spin it round so that you're at a good cutting angle and I can just trim the bits that need to cut away like that oh and I can see that there's a few little bits so I haven't cut quite through that shouldn't matter they should just pull away anyway when I tuck them out so there we are and then you can just push them through and if they're a bit caught at the corners just give them a gentle tug and there we have the top cut so I now need to trim around the edges I'm going to be sticking my um, tissue paper over these holes so I want to leave a reasonable bit just to give it a bit of strength so I'm just going to run round leaving about five six centimeters it's probably going to vary as I go around I'm not being very accurate but just keeping a steady cut going all the way around there you can pull any excess little bits away and then obviously keeping my hand behind the blade again just steady the little edge closest you can move your blade up to the wrong end of the knife just keep your fingers away from the, the cutting side and then we can twizzle that around and link up the line that I had before so there we are that's now ready to put the tissue paper on 
So the other thing you can do as well is just have plain silhouettes. So you don't actually need to be cutting holes out of your objects. You can just make pure silhouettes as well that you can just put in the window against the, the backing paper. Or you can do interesting designs around them on your backing paper. But the order that your pieces need to go is you've got the glass of your window pane. Then you need to have your, your um, cut out. Then you will have your coloured paper, so if I was having purple eyes on my cat I would have a piece of purple paper behind. And then behind that you have the um, wet strength tissue paper to give you a bit of privacy. So if I want to um, decorate this one, I've chosen three colours that I'm going to use for this one. Um, it's part of a series of stockings that I'm making and I want them to all hang the same way around. So this is how they will look from the outside. I've had to trim this one yet. And then from the back, they look a lot more messy. That will be on the inside of the house. So I want these all to, sh to hang the same way around. So always work out which way around you need your silhouette to go before you start putting the, um, the tissue on the back of it. So just try it in the window maybe, make sure that you're putting it on the right side because it's quite annoying when you find you've done it the wrong way around. Um, okay, so I'm going to put green heels and toes on this one. So I think it might be useful for me just to draw that curve in before I start cutting. And then I can cut it much too big and that's not a problem, but that will just make sure that I'm not going to be overlapping all these other pieces here. So I can cut out a bit that's plenty big enough. And I can just make that much, much bigger on this side. I'll try that if that's, yeah, that should be fine as long as I push it far enough up that way. So then the easiest way to stick it on is just to put the glue stick onto the black paper. The black paper's quite strong. Where you've got thin little bits like this, just support it as you take your glue around so you don't rip any bits off. And I can stick that down. Slight overlap there, I can just pull that over. And then I'm gonna trim all the edges afterwards. And then I'm going to go along and I would do the same for the toe, same for the top. And then I'm going to cover all these spots. Now, if you've got little kids who are wanting to help you, like if I do it, I'll probably be fairly careful and make sure that each piece only covers the one spot. But to be honest, it doesn't matter. So if the kids want to put it everywhere, it will still look fantastic. So it's not worth stressing over getting it looking perfect. It will look great. What? However you do it, I mean, I will probably just sort of put those on. So they're a bit ragged, but it's covering the hole there, which is fine. But if you layer up pieces of tissue, it will still look fine. It'll look really nice. So it won't even matter when you hold it up. You're not going to notice. The only thing is that the colours will mix, so it's a bit like normal colour mixing. So if you've got a yellow and a blue, you'll get a green when the light shows through. But you can try them out at the window. So don't worry about getting it really, really tidy. It doesn't matter too much at all. And then once you've got them all stuck on and dry, you can just run your scissors around the edge. Just tidy up any loose ends. And it's much, much easier than trying to get them all to fit exactly when you're doing your sticking so just let them hang over the edge and trim it all up afterwards okay so now we've got everything ready to assemble our window the easiest way to do this if assuming that you're working during daytime hours is to build it in the window so you can see the light shining through and see the, how it's going to look so what we'll do is make it back to front. So we'll make it so it's seen from the inside and then we'll take the whole thing down and just spin it around so that it looks right from the outside. 
but just to hold the tissue in, in place just put a short little bit of sellotape obviously you can start at the top and then you can just hold it in place at the sides in a few places and then when you take that down again rather than trying to pull those bits of tissue to, of sellotape off you can just fold them back round on itself and leave them there it's safer than trying not to rip it so i have got my stockings that i'm going to put together in the window and i think they're going to look fine what i am going to do is use a big marker pen and i'm going to put a big washing line on so you can just draw directly with a pen onto this paper i haven't checked this pen so i hope it works so let's have a go so i'm going to do a big washing line coming down like that let's zoom this up a little bit okay my pen's not actually great should have checked it but i'll go over that again and see if i can get it to work a bit better okay lesson learned check your pen before you try there we go anyway i think that would work too and then i'm gonna tape up my stockings on the line so to do that, I'm just going to grab a glue stick and just doesn't need to be covered all over. I'm going to go all around the outside and a few little places around and just get that ready to stick on. So little bits of glue here and there onto the stocking. And where should I put that one? Like that, I think. So I've got a smaller one, which is going to go next to it. So I'll just glue up that one as well. There we go. And I'll try these out, what do you think? Big then small or small then big? I think I'll go with the small one. Okay, so my smaller one can hang up here. And then I'll just glue up the last one. and there we go so there's my stockings i've also cut out quite a lot of little snowflakes just plain from tissue paper and i think i'm just going to put some little snowflakes quite subtle because it's a very pale tissue that i've used and what i'm going to do whoops is just put a bit of glue onto my backing because it's a little bit tricky they're so flimsy there we go and i've pulled my tape off doing that so i can stick that back up again whoops right there we go i've got a bit more tape on it this time make it a bit more robust so I've got another snowflake that can go in this gap here. So just hold your tissue with the other hand and that will keep it a bit stronger. There we go. This one can go up here. And I have clearly not used enough sellotape on my dusty doors here. I'm working in my workshop here and it's absolutely full of paint dust from when I've been spraying but there we go we can fix it a bit firmer when we spin it round and put it on display but you can just 
put anything in the background really just Now I think if I had double PVC double glazing it would stick a lot better but I'm sticking to bare wood here which isn't ideal but I'm guessing most people don't live in a shed so you've probably got some better window frames than I have here and I stuck a bit of glue there so that one can go down and obviously I'll carry on and cover the whole lot and when I come to take it and spin it round, I can take that tape, just fold it over the edge so that it doesn't pick up and stick to itself. And then when I want it to be displayed from outside, I can spin the whole lot round and just stick that up in the window ready for display. So obviously I need to get some more tape but there we go and that's how it will look when it's finished that actually looks quite nice from both sides there but obviously i'm going to have to swap this one for this window and vice versa so that my lines match up in the middle i hope that helped <laughs> bye